shall we continue yeah so we start off with second act like before christ and after christ my life could be neatly divided into pre 14th april 1944 and post 14th april 1944 a new dance ballet called kovalan was coming to bombay in april it was supposed to have a bit of kathakali bharatnatyam manipuri and what not one of those modern kichdis very fashionable the story of kovalan was the story of my life it was about a man shankara panikar who was torn between two lovers rinalini sarabhai and nandita kriplani but that was art in real life i was shankara panikar and the two women were yajvendra and comrade shashi um wasn't 14th april shashi ji's birthday maybe she is having a shira and pova birthday party maybe i should stitch a new bush shirt for the occasion maybe i should carry pedas maybe i'm not thinking straight maybe yajvendra has returned or maybe gala seth is not happy with my work and wants to substitute me with his nephew from bachao that reminds me i better go and meet kanwar saab and get a list of ships visiting the docks that way we can plan our provision supply oof these are difficult times the black market is flourishing one gallon of kerosene costs 1 rupee imagine the war must end mount batten is planning to make an all out effort on japanese positions in burma and malaya The Bombay port resembles a military headquarters with officers and men of the fighting wings of the allied forces. Armed with my special permit, I take the train from Wadala to Balad Pier on 12th April. This is a special train. Otherwise, my third class monthly train pass of rupees 8 from Churchgate to Khar would have sufficed. Love is such an irregular idea. It is so difficult to express it honestly. Why? I mean, look at man and his progress. He is planning to travel to the moon, explore the depths of the ocean, discover a cure for TB, do jugglery with numbers at the stock exchange, and yet man has not been able to come up with a better option than "I love you." It is so unfair to reduce all the great whirl and twirl of grand emotions to three bland words: "I love you." Plus, when do you utter it? In the in the beginning, after three meetings, after a lifetime? There should be a handbook, especially for first timers like me. unless ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge i kitna complicated hai sab kuch love is too hazardous a business to leave to the discretion of humans so i examined the ships in the manila folder in kanwar saab's office he returned for lunch hungry and angry apparently he had examined a british ship the fort stikin a single screw coal burning vessel of 7142 tons the ship had unusual cargo kanwar saab had made a meticulous list He showed it to me boastfully. It said, "In hold number one, sulphur weighing three twenty-five tons and cotton weighing two sixty-eight tons. Above the sulphur bags, there lay fish manure and thirteen thousand one sixty-three pieces of timber. In hold number two, one eighty-seven tons of Category C ammunition plus cotton weighing seven sixty-nine tons. Then there were eleven thousand five thirty-seven timber pieces, scrap iron, forty-two old dynamos, cases of wireless sets, and one sixty-eight tons of super-sensitive Category A ammunition." 1089 small drums of oil hold number 3 573 tons of lubricating oil and 58 tons of category A ammunition and 20 tons of RAF's inflammable ar- aircraft dope along with 214 drums of oil hold number 4 523 tons of explosives 405 tons of cotton along with dry fruits hold number 5 196 tons of cotton dry fruits plus raisins pieces of timber and 6220 drums of oil but What grabbed my eye was a tiny detail which mentioned that number 2 hold had an interesting consignment gold 1 million pounds sterling addressed to a bank in Bombay 31 wooden crates of gold Love is like gold and all that glitters is not gold I suppose one of man's genuine failures has been love he hasn't been able to remedy it or find a solution man has had three grand failures He hasn't discovered a saucer and a cup that does not spill tea, a pressure cooker in which the handle does not come off, and a proper protocol for love with rules and regulations. Kanwar Saab was furious with the captain of the Fort Stikin for not abiding by Rule 46 of the Port Rules of International Code, whereby a ship carrying dangerous cargo should display a red flag. But Captain Nice Smith of Fort Stikin did not want to advertise the cargo of the ship to the enemy. Everyone was expecting a Pearl Harbor type attack on Bombay port. A few days ago, Madras port had been bombed. That evening, on my way from the hospital, I picked up a slime juice from the shop. That, along with patata pawa, bhel puri, and chivra, would be a fine nashta for Comrade Shashi. D Day arrived. It was 14th April 1944. It was 14th April 1944. There was something unusual in the air. German defences had collapsed. 
the black sea coast was about to fall into russian hands gandhi ji had malaria while i was reading the newspaper i had noticed a very young chap his name was devdat pishorimal anand he left lahore in 1943 got down at bombay central railway station with only 30 rupees in his pocket he had managed to get a clerk's job in military accounts office he wanted to become a movie star it seems ha <laughs> what a thought he had nothing going for him except he jumped all over the place talked a lot and hummed in soon you know i thought nehru was much more handsome than him anyway this devdat was raving about a film called jawab by pc barua i asked wasn't barua the director of devdas you know i failed to understand why anyone should make a film about a drunkard then bapu rao pendharkar he told me i'm a buddhu he said devdas badi hit hai naaj gana pyar tragedy even 100 years from now people will say paisa bolta hai now that was the name of pendharkar's film he never lost an opportunity to publicize it 14th april 1944 it was a sweltering hot friday every year it gets hotter something must be done about the pollution from the motor cars the mills really bardash ki bhi koi had hoti hai i was stuck in a procession in dadar it was the 51st birthday of dr apedkar there were huge crowds i followed a group of women perhaps with a bit of enterprise i could have placed a garland of flowers around his neck mother would have been proud of me 14th april 1944 i mustered courage and entered derby talkies the name it was rumored came into being because the owner had won a jackpot at the derby the film was jawab this was my first movie i could have watched v shantaram's mali at uh, novelty but that was not to be fate played a part anyway it's not as the cinema lost a big rasik in me subsequently i saw only one other film gandhi by atenbro i never sat through either film in gandhi i left the movie theater you know i could not tolerate the assassination of gandhi ji in the first 2 minutes it was very real that's why i say art must never imitate life it's not good for the health you know 14th april 1944 i was passing through the streets everything was it should be was as it should be automobile spare parts kanti photo studio anaj ki dukan two men were sipping chai and discussing how bhoiwada united defeated makabi sports club by one goal because the match was fixed that the referee was purchased hmm men will be men no 14th april 1944 jawab was okay it had a rich hero called manoj who sent to his future father in law for a rescue but manoj loses his way and is offered shelter by a railway station master this master has a pretty daughter called kanan devi whose main objective in life is to make funny faces and sing songs manoj falls in love with this kanan devi and then even as the love story was about to climax there was a huge explosion the screen was ripped apart 14th april 1944 it was 5 minutes past 4 i had reached razak chamber just then there was a tremendous explosion a havaldar was standing on the pavement his head was chopped off by a piece of metal that had flown through the air i was stunned people were running everywhere 14th april 1944 it was 10 minutes past 4 there was a stampede in the theater somehow i managed to jump over the gates the sky was filled with flying white hot metal 14th april 1944 it was 10 minutes past 4 buildings were trembling splinters of glass flew from shattered windows flakes of hot livid ash and fire were falling haphazardly i couldn't re- recognize bujwala a few minutes ago he had lovely wavy black hair now he was bald He kept shouting the Japs have come the Japs have come bhago bhago I believe he ran all the way to Bandra full speed 14th April 1944 burning bales naphtha debris dense smoke and one huge boiler blocked the road I ran and ran and reached an open ground burnt limbs soot were falling falling all around me 14th April 1944 I limped and scrambled over the rubble I wanted to get to Teen Sakina Manzil 14th April 1944 there was a second explosion 34 minutes after the first explosion louder and much more brutal 14th april 1944 in front of my eyes teen sakina manzil was crumbling there was a big hole in its center a piece of molten lead had cr- crashed on its roof and fallen through and through all five floors from roof to ground floor baba's shop was no more where was baba where was comrade shashi in the open ground my mind was racing someone mentioned the explosions were from a british ship at the docks i put two and two together It must be the fourth strike in with its hundreds of tons of explosive bombs, oil, cotton, timber, sulfur. Fourth strike in was a time bomb. Kanwar Saab was right. The ship laden with explosives should not have been allowed into the docks. It was illegal. An accidental spark would have triggered off the ammunition in the hold. I was hurt. Bag me soda, thoda sa iodine laga diya, aur ek pain killer. I needed to get to a hospital. Saint George was the closest, but it was in the dock area. Kya pata wahan kya aafat aayi hogi? 
so i decided to go towards gt hospital in the gutter there was a dead man clutching onto a copy of mumbai samachar he had been charred by the heat i picked up the dead man's cycle it was scorching hot i raced to teen sakina manzil it had a hole in its heart where was shashi ji at gt hospital i was treated there i heard the arp which used to organize drills as prevention against air raids was hiring temporary nurses i volunteered i was taking in a fancy victoria to baikala sab kuch taba ho gaya tha log idhar udhar bhag rahe the apni bachi kuchi cheezon ke sath i reached the dormitory we were short staffed so unmindful of the glass cuts in my face i got to work every minute more and more injured persons were brought in every fourth person would die in front of us us waqt sab kuch narak lag raha tha the bombay dock explosion even today at 6 minutes past 4 i have nightmares about the bombay dock explosion if i'm sleeping i wake up i'm trapped in a fire everything is ablaze me and five black skeletons which dance flaming drums of oil hurtle towards me my hair bursts into fireworks i run but blazing bales of cotton chase me i dive into the sea and a huge fire envelops the ships and warehouses from a cloud comrade shashi appears like kanan devi and tries to rescue me just then there is a blast and a tidal wave lifts fort stike in 60 feet into the air and smashes it down on comrade shashi's head both drown in the sea hmm forever this nightmare plays and replays in my head daily that's why i have stopped sleeping it's easier rather sleepless than anguished 14th april 1944 was the day of the bombay stock exp- dock explosion the official count was 336 dead 1798 injured Two days later, I saw some men craw- come crawling towards me. Kido ki tarah. Mujhe laga badmashi kar rahe hain. When they were near, I realized they had lost all their limbs. No hands, no legs. Day after day, the flow was unabated. As usual, the unofficial guesstimates were ten times the official count. All bodies except those identified were buried at Worli. The Bombay dock explosion. When I visited the docks to search for three of Gala Seth's mazdoors and Kanwarsa, the whole area was filled with European bodies. When examined it was found out all of these were Indian dock workers and fire staff their outer skin had peeled off that's why they looked white I shifted to Munjo Kach this after I had helped Nehru's daughter give birth to her first born they named him Rajiv pony baby while sitting in the first class bogey and being cooled by ice slabs baba told me the bombay dock explosion had transpired on the 32nd anniversary of the day the titanic struck an iceberg dekho उन लोगों ने अपनी टाइटैनिक का कितना डिंडोरा पीटा और एक है हम ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द फायर इंजिन बिलोंगिंग टू द बॉम्बे फायर ब्रिगेड वर डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय द फर्स्ट एक्सप्लोजन फायरमैन वर मूव्ड इन फ्रॉम पुणे थाना नाशिक सोल्जर्स डिस्ट्रॉयड स्पेसिफिक बिल्डिंग्स विद आर्मी टैंक्स टू प्रिवेंट द फायर फ्रॉम स्प्रेडिंग टू न्यू लोकेलिटीज पेटी ऑफिसर टी लुइस ऑफ साउथ वेल्स टीयर अ ट्रक लोड ऑफ एम्यूनेशन आउट ऑफ द डॉक्स द ट्रक हैड नो विंडोज नो विंड स्क्रीन नो टायर्स एंड नो स्टीयरिंग व्हील द बॉम्बे डॉक एक्सप्लोजन सच कभी बाहर नहीं आया अंग्रेज तो ठीक है उनका एजेंडा था बट वाई वी सो केयरलेस क्यों कैसे द होल थिंग वॉज शॉर्टेड इन सिक्योरिटी बिकॉज ऑफ द वॉक न्यूज वॉज सप्रेस्ड हर बार वही वही ड्रामाबाजी इनसेंट लाइफ वर लॉस्ड बैगर्स वर्कर्स स्ट्रीट एंटरटेनर्स हॉकर्स स्ट्रीट वेमेन फैमिली फ्रेंड्स फोज डर लगता है द ट्रेवल विद द वर्ल्ड इज द स्टूपिड अ कॉक्शो एंड द इंटेलिजेंट अ फुल ऑफ डाउट the bombay dock explosion the sheriff shantidas askuran requested people not to pay heed to rumors but you know people did not pay heed to the sheriff one man was arrested in sholapur for rumor mongering food godowns which were built in 1875 were destroyed 55000 tons of food grains were lost lorries fitted with loud speakers informed 2 million bombay walas that there would be an uninterrupted supply of food grain no one believed them there was another irony Merchants who were engaged in the black market lost heavily because they had kept items illegally in the godowns. The Bombay dock explosion. I recall the overhead tram wires snapped. Local train services to VT, VT station were suspended at Baikala. It was a boom period for taxi drivers. Baba says a meteorologist in Shimla recorded a tremor on the on the station seismograph. I can believe it. On that day, the world shuddered. I lost a piece of me. My soul lost its stirrings. the government couldn't re- ever compensate that no but it was keen to compensate owners and tenants of ruined buildings and so it decided to forego paperwork and proof this was because it wanted to earn the goodwill of the people during the war one harshad bai took advantage of the loopholes and made an unscrupulous claim for a non existent building up to that time the government had paid 85000 rupees against claims for damage by fire or blast traders like gala seth who had shops on the ground floor of the buildings never logged the cash pity 
In the days after the Bombay dock explosion, he lost his money, valuables, jewellery due to vandalism. Since then, the sellers of safes, locks and keys have profited in Bombay. The Bombay dock explosion. There was fire on the horizon for three months. All the buildings in a couple of mile radius of the dock smoldered. The fire had spread rapidly. Although everything was wrecked, the people showed courage and fortitude. The city bounced back to life. But not me. After 14th April 1944, my life was tattered. You see, I am not a strong person in any case. Just did enough to keep body and soul together. I left the city, travelled for many years. There were so many disasters since. But the Bombay dock explosion was the worst. Everything turned into a dull dull shade of grey. My night had begun. I never saw Comrade Shashi again. I never met Shashi ji. She must be living happily with Yajuvendra. Must have raised a family, opened three more shops, built one more building, got insured for health, started a nursing home, managed finances, become religious at a late age. Hey Bhagwan, what a calamity. What a mistake my life has been. Come on mouth. You must not utter such despicable things. Can't go around with such a negative outlook. Shut up. This is not the time for regrets. I have seen worse dumps. Terrible tragedies. Mine is a fairy tale in comparison. One I loved and the other I lost. Sad, no? Comrade Shashi was the apple of my eye and Yajavendra was missing in action near the Naga Hills. The two men in my life both vanished into thin air. My dear mouth, strange as it may sound, unbeknownst to you, good things happen too. You recall that filmy chap Devdath? Ah, he didn't report to work on 14th April 1944, Touchwood. I'm told he became a movie star, changed his name to Dev Anand. I'm hoping he's earning some good money in the movie business. It's such a fickle industry. But much more importantly, there was the gold. Hmm. I see some of you are waking up finally, Hmm. sitting bolt upright. Should I get on with it, my dear mouth? Well, here goes. Due to the Bombay dog explosion, the gold bars in the 31 crates in Fort Steichen flew into the city. Yes, sir. It rained gold bars. The rich, the poor, the cheery, the unhappy. So many people benefited as gold bars crashed through their roofs and onto their heads. As it is said, jab upar wala deta hai, to chappad faad ke deta hai. Barjo ji, kuvar ji, moti wala, hmm? you know, who was a retired civil engineer in Bombay dying, returned the gold ignored. I know, since I used to pass this building, Kukana house in Girgaon, he was rewarded by the authorities. Shashi ji would have said, Barjo ji to baat khandani tha. But the fact is, of, all, of the 130 gold ignits, only 43 were found. That too, after a three-year search of the docks, the surrounding locality, houses. So, what do you have to say to that, my dear mouth? 83 gold ignits and perhaps 83 million millionaires are out there somewhere. As for me, I was half deaf after the explosion. I never married, remained a brahmachari. I loved once and for me, the first was the best. Unless there's a miracle and Chumantar Kalimantar, the... Tattered screen at Derby Talkies comes alive and the lady with the funny face sings a song and brings back my Shashiji to me. That was then, 14th April 1944. It's now 14th April 1994. I told Dr. Bhavna Parikh, I am a birthday girl today. She wished me happy birthday and said, I am still beautiful with beautiful eyes. A husn ki malika. Sound as a bell. <laughs> Except for some respiratory trouble. But I am covered, medically, that is. All those years as a nurse has benefited. See, see, I am repeating myself. Bad girl. Then, even as I am exiting the doctor's clinic, I hear the sound of hiccuping. Comrade Shashi. That must be Comrade Shashi. Oh no, I am become senile. Comrade Shashi must be a happily married grandfather with 101 grandsons. Or did he pass away at the Bombay dock explosion? I never heard about him since. No, no, no. Perish the thought. Oh, to hear him talk after he had downed a glass of two of ace lime juice. Talked as though he was Gandhiji the second. Today, if he were alive, we would be walking out of the dispensary together, hand in hand. He would say, Chalo Shashi ji, ghar jana hai. Ya hum latest film dekh sakte hai. Suna hai Devdas wapas ban rahi hai. Uh, oh, eh. Kya itni raat ko taxi milegi? Aye. The inexhaustible reservoir of sorrow. Hmm, why am I hiccuping? Shukar hai, that old woman has left or else it would be embarrassing. Shh, chup, what's that? The old woman has left something behind. Uh, oh, eh. What's this? Ribbons. So many of them. Navarasa, Navabhava, Navaratana. It reminds me of uh, someone. Shashiji. Ah, come on, don't dream your impossible dreams, silly fellow. 
the girl must have married yajuvandra and must be living happily ever after ah now now don't wallow in self pity i is cry your last the drying up of a single tear as more of a honest fame than shedding seas of gore often have i wondered what if shashi ji and i had kept our appointment on 14th april 1944 i would have lived a different life no but promises are like the full moon if they are not kept at once they diminish day by day maybe one day i should go to teen sakina manzil i'm told it's renovated and is up and about perhaps one day in the near future to relive old memories the possibilities the missed opportunities but time is passing by in a hurry and men like me cannot see the reflection because the water runs rapidly i need still water yes still water that's why i swim in this day and age in the sea uh oh eh oh how i wish this hiccuping ceases hmm now that must be the doctor it's my turn finally coming doctor sahab coming don't go away do wait are at least someone wait for me that's the play that was amazing are we on oh, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> sure okay ठीक है so i want to ask you uh, what was your motivation behind the play why this story and so how did you uh, go about documenting and collecting the facts about this okay so the story uh, uh, was not known to me uh, i wasn't around when this had happened in 44 and so like i mentioned in the introduction there's a very dear friend we have who was a film guru for a lot of us he used to run a film society club in the good old days called screen unit amrit gangar amrit bhai so he was very familiar with this entire uh, incident and also knew a few of the people who were important so you know some of these names like gala seth uh himmat bhai some of the names that are mentioned in passing is also a tribute to a few of the people we had met uh so initially it was basically we divided the work on the play in three parts he wanted me to make a film i unfortunately i don't know how to make a film i know how to write plays so i said that main natak likh sakta hu fir uske baad jo hua so hua uh so uh, we divided the the work on the play in three parts uh, initially it was some reading material that he shared with me uh, some which he had collected there were a couple of books uh there was one by a cadet officer which was documentation but from his point of view and his perspective uh then he amrit himself had taken a small handheld camera and very, done a very amateur shooting of the area and actually the area in which the sort of uh, you know one of the uh, this thing uh, the parts of the ship had fallen through a building you know to those like lucky mansion safia manzil some of those places we actually visited uh then we went to the jew uh, to the synagogue because the boiler had fallen there and they were not able to take it out for almost a year to two years and children had turned it into a kind of children's park because you could go and slide inside and so on and so forth then for example sanders road a lot of the paths were wedged in over there some of the paths that had flown in near the railway station uh, railway tracks it's still over there so that was one part of it uh, then the second part was meeting some of these people which was the most important because fantastic stories to tell each of them they had lived that you know like this central character some you know somebody had lost his ear, uh, hearing simply because of the uh, the sound of the explosion and uh, don't forget there were two explosions the first one at 405 and then immediately so a lot of people escape from the first but because of the impact of the second they got affected because they were caught in the middle of the whole thing uh, and then the third was documentation at asiatic which was the hard work which was to go back and see what else was happening in terms of context in other parts of the country other parts of the world what was happening with the indian congress movement so uh, these were the three this was the method methodology and uh, i mean the characters and things had not come at that time it obviously evolved much much later <laughs> uh but a lot of hard work went into it in collecting of material so there was enough material to write say probably a you know a 100 hour play or a 200 hour play because you know there were so many people who were affected by this and businesses were affected people's lives marriages you know all those sort of things and the topography of bombay at least in that part changed quite a bit after post 14, uh, 14th april so uh, a lot of that and then of course one thought of these two characters and worked on that so that are that you, are you characters based on the documentation that you did or to some did. extent yeah see there was a challenge uh, i i write sort of very boring history based play so there was a challenge given to me by some friends saying ki tum ek love story likho uh love story is traditionally something i don't like i mean i, I mean I, i like great love stories but i'm not i know i'm incapable of writing so this was my effort of writing a love story so i said that okay this is the best i can do i have a boy i have a girl and and if they were caught in a situation like this what might have happened 
So I mean, uh, so that was a kind of a starting point that I would try to write a love story which was uh, unrequited love, not love that is realized. And then, uh, and a lot of people have also asked why is the ending so tragic? Why don't they just meet at the end and why don't you resolve it? Yeah. <laughs> and the answer to that was is very simple because you know those six and a half months, the amount of anguish that I saw and the you know the kind of tragedies that people have gone through, it's unfathomable. You know. Uh, and so one wanted to get a sense, at least share a sense of that with the audience or the you know person who's reading the play that the tragedy that uh, unfolded in those sort of few months was uh, unfathomable and that it was you know beyond your own sort of realm of sort of understanding of things and to give a sense of that so the personal in a way becomes a sort of you know universal in that sense the story or the fact that they are not able to share so many things and so on that becomes a representative of the story of Bombay in a way. <laughs> Uh, what happened to people in this city as well. So that was one of the main reasons for this. So it was a risk uh, that we had, we took. So along the way, did you feel that this might be one of our contributions or th this is a way in which we could bring out the stories of these people or, and uh, was it your, was it your, what should I say? Uh, was it your aim to uh, just uh, tell the story what, what, what had happened in 1944? Yeah, I mean, that is of course one part of it, uh, but if I had only done that, it might have become a, you know, a documentary, a pure documentary in that sense, about which I personally don't have a problem. But the idea was also to sort of, uh, you know, make a connection with what is happening in Bombay. And I knew that the play would be, you know, performing in 2004 in India, in Bombay, wherever. So there was always a need to, you know, also look back at this whole process of history. The more important thing is that, uh, you know, the way we are fortunately or unfortunately taught history or anything in our classrooms or the way the process of pedantry is that we always look at the mainstream history in a larger sense. So the little stories, the smaller characters are never sort of, you know, in the in the context. We are never ever able to understand the contribution that they have made to our entire national building process. So there's another play that we've written which was performed here called Mahadev Bhai. So again, that was uh, an attempt to look at what was the second and third tier in the Congress hierarchy. We always get stuck with Nehru, Gandhi, uh, Sardar, uh, you know, Azad. And the fact that, you know, whatever it was worth, the Congress uh, at that time when they created that whole thing, it was a, a very strong cadre based party and there were innumerable other people down the line. So when all these great national leaders were in prison, the movement was continuing. There was obviously a reason for that, that you had fantastic men to follow up, you know, which is a which is a problem. We, we keep calling, saying political vacuum, political vacuum. So an and, uh, attempt to also look at what is happening below the scene in the sense, you know, not the obvious. Um, so this play, uh, Mahadev Bhai, to some extent, Cotton 56, that's another play that we, uh, we've written. So in that, again, we are looking at this history from an, uh, the other perspective, that the obvious history is there and then there is always the other history which nobody talks about because it's not convenient to talk about it or it makes people uncomfortable. So that is the history which one tries to represent on stage. But important chapters in our life which we should be talking about, shouting about. So, yeah. So plays like Mahadev Bhai and Sri Sakina Manzil, they are not uh, based on contemporary history, I mean, they are uh, stage far behind in history. Also, uh, uh, the uh, people who know about the history can, uh, say, connect with those plays. But what about, uh, you You have said that these plays are staged in Europe, etc. How they connect with the play? Uh, oh, that was just four or five shows, not too many shows. Um, with Sakina Manzil, I don't think they had a problem. I mean, it's a love story. So, I mean, a, a, a suggested love story. So, at that level, it interests anyone and everyone. I mean, the great stories are, I mean, the great novels, the great cinema is based on that. So, you use that as a device to tell the other things that you want to discuss about. If I went into any place, even if I go to, say, uh, you know, Bikaner or Bhopal and start talking about 1944 dog explosion, it will not make sense. It's just the characters that hopefully, you know, is a peg to bring the audience, uh, attract the audience. With Mahadev Bhai, what we've tried to do, I mean, how successful, we don't know, but what we try to do is that the story is told from the point of view of one of you. I mean, it's, the, it's a very young man who's telling the story. And the story keeps going back and forth in time, but the con the times that it's happening is now. And again, it's very interesting, you know, there's, uh, if you, since you've seen the play, there is that bit where he talks about Godra and that it was the symbol of Hindu Muslim. And we, when the play was staged, it happened precisely, I think, four and a half, five months after the Godra incident in Gujarat. So, you know, uh, the, lo the, the location of that scene in the play and the context of that suddenly brings the whole play alive. That you are talking about an incident 
100 years ago 50 years ago whatever but because of its importance and relevance otherwise who would have bothered about that particular convention it's a very small convention that took place in the panch mahal in godra you know so uh, it's the location of that history in today's time that makes it relevant or makes it come alive you know so for instance even she she discusses a lot of things like you know uh, her character that is that uh, automobile uh, you know motor pollution or there's too many migrants coming into the city refugees gandagi hai ye hai wo these are all today's issues as well so even the discussion or theory on urbanization what we have been talking about you know you realize there has been no momentum that has taken place in the last 60 years in the city you know so in that sense the issues then and issues now broadly are similar uh, you said that the play was uh, also translated in other indian languages that's right uh, did you feel uh, if you were part of the audience that there was a distinct difference between the audience that saw the play in english and the audience that saw the play in other regional languages so in uh, when it was translated in uh, marathi was translated by a friend it never got staged but we had a reading this was again a very close friend of mine called chetan data he had translated it so it's seen the production he knew me he knows his bombay knew his bombay very well so there was no difficulty in that part of it because he is probably as passionate about this incident and uh, uh, you know we both share a common love for the city itself the problem surprisingly was in dutch uh, and dutch the problem was not really with the text or the characters or the incident itself the problem was with food items uh, you know things like when she talks about sev puri and all these other uh, 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 local uh, the, uh, it was very 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 difficult to explain to them what these things are so initially we sort of uh, showed them some photographs but then again taste is again relative uh, then kinari she had to that's my wife she had to join me later so she actually packed some of this thing and brought it two weeks later because we were seated in brussels so she got some of these food items and they shared and you know they ate it not that it sort of improved the translation but suddenly it started making a lot more sense to them what is this roadside food you know uh, so food was a one concern that uh, was there and then uh, again the sense of uh, you know their idea of urbanization and our idea of city planning is sort of vastly different so when we talk of these things and we talk of uh, lack of civic sense or overcrowded or the sort of lack of planning what when we talk about it we are you know we can compare ourselves to a cairo or a rio de janeiro not to a brussels or to an amsterdam so that was again a issue that they had uh, and of course the savageness of some of our city you know our city politics that is something that they don't understand so uh, could you also tell us students about the stage setting because you have something very specific right that you mentioned about the stage setting of for this but yeah so teen sakina manzil was uh, produced by a group called working title uh, it was directed by jemini patak who played madhav by those of you so so uh, jemini was someone with whom i was working with and we were i was writing a few plays for him or his group uh, and uh, uh, pooja's character was played by suruchi ola who was married to him at that time and uh, uh, so uh, so the 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 stage direction i sort of was that keep it very simple uh, keep it absolutely minimalist uh let let it be like a storytelling se- session that you have as somebody seated under a tree and narrating a story let it let it convey a sense of that don't get into too much uh, around 2003 2004 we were all going through this crisis in indian theater that actors act too much indian actors act too much so we were all trying to sort of find a way in which uh, or a mechanism or a whatever a method through which they can cut down on their acting so one of the things you we are trying to do with sakina manjal was ensure actors don't act so if they are playing the old characters they don't do this whole shri ram lagu you know very overstated and overdone kind of a thing or when they are falling in love you know it's again gushing and so on. so the idea was to play the lines tell the story so this was the one big brief the other thing which i think from jemini's point of view was very scary was he was getting two pages at a time and this was i think opening at the prithvi festival and there was a deadline and a date given to uh, you know prithvi and these guys were obviously rehearsing the play so they didn't know what was going to happen next and they were getting these two pages three pages by email they would be rehearsing it after two days the next two page would come and till i think the very end uh, they didn't know what the end was so and i remember when i finally wrote the last scene i had to fly out i had to go to egypt for some reason and i was in egypt and i got an sms no they have to meet and they have to they have to remarry this can't this can't be the end there was sort of huge protestations and but they had no time they had a week to open so uh that was it and then i think the opening happened it was pretty good they were a little um un sort of rehearsed for the opening shows then as the play they kept performing they grew and uh, i think that was the uh the music was fairly minimal they used just two chairs and so that was the area and then 
to depict the dog's uh, explosion, they had a mat on which they just threw some red light. Uh, and then they played with the siren as a sort of soundtrack. So that was what they did. There was nothing sort of overdone that, you know, lashe gir rahi hai or khun khraba or nothing like that. It was left to the imagination of the audience that the words would hopefully convey the sense of whatever was. You know. so the writing of these interlinked monologues, you conceptualize this right from the beginning or, you know, it sort of happened slowly as you were working on the script? Yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> uh, no clue. Well, I, I mean, I have no memory. I know it's a good question and sometimes when I read this play, I say, wow, that's really cool. I mean, but I have no clue how it was done. Yeah. Uh, I, I know I had a, I know who my two, I knew who my two actors were, Gemini and Suruchi. I knew what their strengths are, broadly speaking. Uh, I also knew that we are going to play it in a particular way. So these were the givens for me. I, of course, had the material and the story. Uh, the, no, I don't remember this at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and any special reason behind naming both of them Shashi? My mother's Shashi. <laughs> so yeah, and no, and this is a sort of typical Indian thing, no? Kiran, Shashi, uh, Divya. These are names you never know the uh, you know the gender of the. So it was just playing on that, yeah. So uh, in every play, I have characters who are people from my life or around my life. So it's a small way of saying thank you to them. So this was for my mother. And she was very thrilled because she, uh, when she saw the first show, she, uh, she saw it with Shashi Kapoor. So she was maha thrilled because after the show, she walked up to him, introduced herself and said, Hi Shashi, I am Shashi. So, <laughs> so she was quite happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, can you give some tips? Uh, actually, we are all undertaking a course uh, in creative writing. So can you give us some tips or some exercises which we should practice to improve our writing skills or something? Okay. Right now? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, we can sit and uh, doing it here is a bit difficult. Uh, I mean, the best thing and I think everybody would say this to you is to keep writing, number one. And the second thing is to read a bit, uh, which uh, we are sort of increasingly turning into a ray, sort of... <laughs> sure, sure, sure. This is also meant for yeah. people who sure. are not likely to interact. True, with us true, in any true. Way. Uh, I think the question, if I understand you well, uh, it comes from this desire to also sort of this curiosity also about other writers. Mm. Uh, each one will have their own mysterious pathways, but is there something that you would like to share in terms of uh, how you got started writing? Yeah. And if there is something of the process that you can share? Sure. So, I, I, I three things. I'm, in my case, I'm slightly fortunate. I uh, belong to a college which was very strong. In Bombay, you have a tradition of the intercollegiate. You, as a sort of Marathi, would know about that. So, it's a very strong tradition. So, uh, the, uh, the, the tradition helps you in many ways, in the sense, uh, it, you know for certain that what you're going to write will be produced. Then you're broadly working with a bunch of uh, friends or colleagues from your class or the neighboring class or whatever it is. So it helps you to write this 30 minute thing and you are able to rehearse for X amount of time for which the college commits uh, some amount of money and space. So that was a big help and the other thing is because you were part of Mithiba it had a tradition of you know having an Ashutosh Gavarikar and an Aushal Mehta and a Mahindra Joshi. The seniors would always be around to guide you. So there was always this process of mentoring which is a very Indian way of doing things you know there is always someone around to mentor you. Uh, so if you wrote a really bad play, there would be somebody there to tell you to rewrite it or to redo it or save the play if you know they didn't have time or something like that. So broadly speaking, you would read a lot of other plays and so you knew that these are the 25 to 50 really good one-act plays that had been uh, you know, produced or published in this country. Uh, that is... Uh, and so basically what probably some, some other young person in another part of the country might have taken three years, you learn all that in sort of six months time during that intercollegiate phase. And that is invaluable experience and once the play is staged, you know, because the amount of resources and all that that is pooled in, that plays a big role in doing all this, watching the process of rehearsal. So again, I was very lucky, I wrote a play in my, uh, my first play, I think it was called IMI. Uh, and we had a fairly noted stage director in those days called Akash Kurana. So, he had directed it and so two things happened. One was he brought in a professional <coughs> expertise. Uh, so it was good to see how uh, a professional theatre director is dissecting your text and you know adding elements to it which you never thought and imagined. So then you know the process became, you automatically the level goes up straight away from uh, you know playing Gali cricket you go straight away into Time Shield and Kanga League you know. So that helps you straight away and then after that you go up the thing. The other thing about writing is you know it's hard work. Uh, I mean there is no mystery to the process. 
it's hard work is very lonely work all the great writers that you whether it's a marquez or it's a, a, you know a bashir or a premchand they would have a you know they they say that it's a you know a job of whimsical and you you know job inspiration aaya but a lot of the great writers have been known to get up at 6:37 follow a very very hard ritual write for 4 hours come what may good bad indifferent uh, learn to reject those texts so that habit of writing for 4 hours daily is invaluable you could write whatever you want you could be writing letters to the editor you could be writing short stories you could be writing poems songs for movies whatever but the habit of writing is a constant one and it's it's something that you can get uh, you know uh good at only when you keep doing it day in and day out so and the, i think most of the greats do it even now i mean there's this fantastic book i have of uh, borges is a biography one of the writers i admire and even though he was blind he would constantly be writing you know and that is you cannot you know it's like tendulkar going to the nets and doing it every day so it's like the writers have to write <coughs> there's no escaping that also yeah milton and milton yes the people who were there in 1944 and whom you talked to so were they uh, did they have a chance to watch this some of them did some of them yeah okay. uh, <laughs> uh it's a bit difficult because uh, a lot of them uh, were very emotional about the whole experience and for them it it all came back so they obviously did not look at it as a piece of theater or a piece of art or anything for them it was much much more uh so it was at two levels one was uh, a certain amount of uh, catharsis because of what and you know they were meeting them after the show used to be a terrible experience because you know they would be very very uh stirred by the whole experience the second thing used to be that uh, they were very grateful that you know somebody had taken the effort of recording this whole thing uh, documentation which is something as a country we are quite careless about i mean not just this incident but innumerable other things we are very shabby about that whole process and that they were i think quite grateful about So when you had these conversations with them were they sort of spontaneous or did you record them or something No no never record yeah, yeah. yeah. but spontaneous right? uh, Yeah but see I told you I had two friends Amrit Amrit bhai Amrit Gangar and uh, there's another friend of ours called Dharamshi bhai who's like the age old Socrates of Bombay uh, so uh, I've been very lucky with all my plays that I've had someone like that who has opened up sort of doors for me so it's you know I, so that opportunity was there so I had access to people who otherwise would be a bit difficult mm-hmm. uh also the other thing i'm slightly lucky is that i can speak about six or seven languages so the it's not that you know language is 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 a great sort of open, so english hindi marathi gujarati tamil whatever so uh, in this case it used to be a lot of gujarati a, a bit of you know broken marwadi and so on that those are little things that matter uh no recording because people get uncomfortable uh no making notes while they are talking because that you know then it becomes a kind of formal space here uh here this would be interesting and you know these are these are these are wonderful people so they would sort of if they felt uh, adequately they would jump into a cab and say ki chalo apne godi par jaiye and i will show you ki kya shoot hai you at level whatever you know so those kind of things or a place where they have eaten so when this this keshav rao naik incident which i mentioned you know where he meets him in the wayside and one of them actually took us to that and today even today the statue is still there in paidoni Uh, of Keshav Rao Naik, it's there in that basti and so on, and you know again it's typical Bombay because they have built a tea stack around it, and so that uh, the the uh, that whole thing is undermined. But that's actually a legacy. If you look at it historically, it should be something that we should celebrate because he obviously contributed a lot to labor law in that particular area. But those kind of things, so they would feel inspired and actually take you to those spaces, you know. Uh, and this one gentleman who I had met, he was fantastic because he was about 87 or 88, and he used to uh, uh, in the morning. I said, "Savare, aau tamne malwa." He said, "Nay, savare to hu. Uh, I go to chowpati for a swim." And you know, and he's 87, and his body is body was very very weak, but he would do that swimming exercise every day and uh, for an hour. And so when I met him, I actually met him at chowpati, and then from there we went to his home. <laughs> so those kind of things and he had lost about partial eyesight because the second blast when it took place the glasses had smashed in the house oh. uh, and then some of those pieces had uh, oh. yeah yeah so the multilinguality that was there in your experience of gathering the content, was shared yeah was shared yeah yeah and then it also came into the play right that's right it shifts between Correct. the english yeah. and yeah. the right and in the text again we are confined because of what is written but the actors play that up a little more uh, did that a little more jemini himself is multilingual likewise suruchi was uh, so we play that up a little more i, I mean you know uh, today whatever one may say about mumbai i mean we hate it and whatever it is love it or whatever the choice but the fact that it is a beautiful city 
and the fact is it did a lot of things normally and you know very very in a very casual way which a whole lot of other cities have struggled to do and this was one of them you know it this whole thing of shared histories and many stories you know being able to exist simultaneously that's a wonderful thing it doesn't happen in other parts of the world you know and that so that was something that we got a sense of when we were there and what we did with the actors was we spent a lot of time not a lot of time we spent some time because actors are actors they need to do other things they need to rehearse plays and learn lines but we took them for a small tour around and a couple of these people they met so they got a sense of you know where all this is coming from one last question the very exact uh, information that you have of the cargo on the ship yes that was uh, got from the so that was got from this one book that i picked up on the carrier and then i cross referenced that and i got that from the asiatic as well because there is uh, uh, the gazette uh, there is something called the gazette i have my notes somewhere <laughs> but something called the gazette in which there is a documentation of this whole uh, thing and that cargo was uh, yeah that's exact there's yeah. not an item which i've removed nor an item which i've added here yeah 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 and it was very interesting you know speaking about translation in other languages when uh, we you know and i used to always feel very uncomfortable with that scene mm -hmm. because uh, even germany commented you know just rattling out this is like statistics and audiences will switch off and when rudy rudy is this uh, friend of ours in uh, brussels who translated the play into dutch and when he saw it i said so uh, now we come to the really tough part of the play and he said why why do you say that and he said this is poetry <laughs> you know and and it is because if you read the items in a row it's, it's such a unnatural uh, sort of gathering of eight totally different items in that one hold and how could that have happened i mean how can a human being even think of doing that so and but they played it very differently in dutch they had these two uh, here the actors were much younger there the actors were much older there was there's this apparently uh, very uh, sort of renowned actress over there in europe uh, i forget her name but she is like the like the meryl streep of uh, european theater so she and this other gentleman who was who was a retired actor but had come out of retirement to play and then they had this one uh, man on sax who was there to give the resonance to the whole thing but they played it they didn't move from their chair and i mean i didn't understand i don't understand dutch at all but it was a stunning experience so very very beautifully done they <laughs> and they used uh, they used a huge screen uh, it was an enormous stage so if you've been like to the jamshed baba theater it's as big as that in terms of stage space so there's just two solitary actors and then just these scraps of paper keep coming and i don't know how they do that but these scraps of paper keep coming and at the end of it there is this mosaic on the floor and they have this beautiful backdrop which keeps changing very slightly done it's not as if it's bombay bombay but there's just a touch of that again very nicely done very very but it's very understated it's very european it's not like us you know we are a little thoda chillana rehta hai humko and <laughs> i think we could end this session thank you very much ramesh thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.